Hi everybody, welcome back. Thank you so much for being here. This is Minimalism Monday and today I have a minimalist or value thought to share with you. A while back ago, I told you guys I was gonna quit life as I know it. And one thing I found myself doing was the exact opposite of what I normally would do to quit life. And what I normally would do is change everything. I'd quit my job, start a new business, move somewhere new. And while I moved somewhere new, I didn't do it because I just felt like it and because I was following my heart. I did it because for the first time, I wanted to try something different so I don't get the same result. And what I mean by this is, I think a lot of us know the common phrase that says, insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. And what I've noticed now is a certain pattern that's occurred over the last 10 years of my life when it comes to business and when it comes to everything that goes around my scheduling and what I'm doing. And something that I had talked about was the idea that money doesn't bring happiness or buy happiness. And there's something that I wanted to add on to that clarification because throughout this process of reflecting on my life, turning 30, not meeting all the expectations that I thought I was gonna be at at 30, and trying to come to terms with that as well as reevaluating my purpose, my intentions, and what it is that I'm doing, I found that there is sort of a cap or a exception to that notion. And that notion is money does not buy happiness. Freedom does, but money can buy freedom. And the reason that this thought came down to this perspective in my mind is because I was thinking about, okay, money doesn't buy happiness. I've made money a lot and it doesn't make me any much more happier. But if I question whether or not I'd go back to the income that I used to have, the answer was no. And I had to ask why and at what cost. And if money doesn't buy happiness, why are so many people in pursuit of it? And why is there so many friends of mine who make great money and are equally happy and kind and giving and passionate and caring and everything that you typically don't hear rich people being about? I've actually, on a side note, never met a rich person who was uh, a crook or who was rude or entitled. I've never met such a person. I know they exist out there, but most people that I know that are very successful and that have money are equally as giving and kind and caring and sharing and just like the most amazing beings that I've ever met on the planet. So that's just something that I've experienced and that I want to share with you. And it's actually quite inspiring because when I seek to be like somebody who inspires me, it's not about the money. But most people who inspire, inspire me seem to have their stuff together. They're balanced in their health, in their relationships, in finance and business, and everything across the board, or most things across the board. So it was an interesting thought for me to dig deep in, and it was something that I wanted to share with you, mainly because I often get asked by my peers, people around me, by you guys, how do you become a business owner? How do you become an entrepreneur? I want that freedom. And there are two things that I get. They say, I don't want to work a job getting paid for something that I don't want to do. I want to do what I want to do and work for myself and be a business owner and entrepreneur. And this is something that I'm like, I don't know why people don't get it. And I couldn't really put it into words. And now it's here and it's something that I want to share. And that is, are you really sure? that you want to be a business owner and an entrepreneur? Are you really sure you want to make money doing what you love to do? Because often I see people move into this realm of just being an artist to suddenly getting paid to be an artist. And then the complaint is, I can't do exactly what I want. It takes the passion out of my art. I'm for forced to deliver what the client or the market wants. And it's just not what I thought. It's just not the same. I think what people ultimately want is the idea of freedom. I want the freedom to do what I want. I want to do my art because working my job takes time away and it takes time that I need to make money that I could be using to do my art. Wouldn't it be cool if I could do my art and make money at the same time? Now with the exception of entertainers and some of the top league artists, and these are people who literally get to do their art. They get to act, create music, and they make money off of doing that. If you want to do something kind of like what we do, we do photography. 
I don't get to do my art necessarily when I do my job. There's so many back end things that I do. In fact, most of the time I spend my time with customer service, uh, coding websites, marketing, development, looking at products and props, talking to people, talking with other businesses and working out the scheme of things and how it's going to work. And photography is a small part of that. And photography is also something that I love to do, but it's not really my ideal situation to take a photo of inanimate objects or of holding or wearing inanimate objects. I like taking photos of things that inspire me. And while I get to do that, and it's really cool that I get to photograph uh, for a living, and that's something that I love doing rather than doing something else, it's not exactly perfect. I have to be able to be okay with delivering what the market wants within the means of my values. Right. So it, it was an interesting thing because I think that the biggest part of the cycle that I was struggling with was I want to do what I want and still get paid for it. Well, most of the time, everybody wants to do what they want and nobody's going to really care what you want unless it's going to add value to them or unless it's going to improve their lives in some sort of way. So it's important to know that I, I think, and what I'm trying to share with you is that minimalism and the pursuit of it, business and the pursuit of it, or money or happiness and the pursuit of it, we're ultimately pursuing the opportunity or the ability to have the freedom to do what we want and in most cases, when we want. I think that is the most important thing to keep in mind, no matter what per practice or purpose you're pursuing. The idea is to add value to your life and that value comes in terms of experience, connectivity, and freedom. If you're tied to your job, even though you make a lot of money but you have to work overtime every single week, it's going to ultimately end in unfulfillment and unhappiness. If you are have all the free time in the world, but it's costing you your finances, then that's not balanced either. Or if you're eating the perfect diet and it's costing you your health and your ability to be your 100% self for you and your family, then that's going to cause you to be unhappy or unbalanced. And so the idea is imbalance. The idea is in what adds value to my life. And that's going to look different for me than it is for you. Maybe you want to be an artist because you love to paint. You love to draw. I personally don't care to paint or draw. Once in a while I might do it, but I would hate to do that every single day or to have to do that every single day. It doesn't matter if I'm animating for Disney, it would be an honor and a privilege, but that's not something that I would really like to do every day. So we're all different in that sense. So what I impose on you or what I have to ask you in hopes that you find value in these thoughts um, is what is it that you want to do with your life? How can you gain more freedom to do it? And what things can you remove now and choose to add in or move towards to be able to supplement or improve that type of lifestyle? I really think in approaching it that way, we're going to find ourselves happier as we go along. And that's where I found myself in the last several months or in the last year of pursuing this idea. I had everything in Hawaii. I had money, I had space. I was living in the most beautiful place on the planet, but it didn't add value to me in my life to be away from my family. It didn't add value to pay all that money to either fly back to mainland to see my family or to do business and to just like live in this, amazing place all the time, but that's just my perspective. For some people, they're not close with their family and they just would die to live on the beach every single day. So it's ebb and flow and it's about being truly honest with yourself because ultimately at the end of the day, anybody and everybody can make suggestions and most people do unsolicitedly, but only you can know what truly adds value to your life. Only you can know if you're being honest with yourself and if that's really propelling you forward and if you really truly are happy. So I hope those thoughts give you guys a little bit of insight about what to focus on when asking if things add value because the idea is like, okay, does it add value, but to what? You know, most of us stop at the first question, which is, do I want this, yes or no? But can we continue to dive further and say why? What are my intentions behind this? What is this gonna bring me? What is my ultimate goal and how do I get there? The idea is about self-awareness and if you are aware of yourself, then it's really easy to move forward in ways and take action in ways that's going to benefit the self. So 
that's it for today that is my little piece of minimalism slash value information that i have for you and i just really wanted to loop that around back to how i quit life and how that changed it was a very extreme internal change and not much of an external change and it has brought so much balance and so many doors that have opened solutions and new opportunities to level up or improve my life in many different ways and in many different areas of it and so that is ultimately what i hope for you i wish you guys the utmost happiness and the freedom to love your life and live your life so most of all remember to be good to yourself be the greatest that you can be and to show gratitude everywhere you go because gratitude is the one thing that i think is just magical in bringing more abundance to your life and for that i am so grateful for you and i'm so grateful to be on this journey with you i thank you guys so much for listening to me and i will see you guys in the next video ciao